there, welcome to the RPS project. Today is my second look at the differential amplifier, more commonly known as the long tail pair. Now in my previous video I had a look at this circuit and tried to understand what it was doing from some basic circuits and diagrams and yeah, I seemed to make it work, had some success, it sort of did what I wanted it to. There are a couple of amendments and alterations I can make to this circuit that I was actually looking at um, and I decided yeah, why not, let's go ahead and have a look at those and see if I can make those amendments, alterations to the circuit and see what it does. I was hoping that what it will do is to stabilise the circuit a bit more and hopefully give me a lot more gain. So I'm going to start with the whiteboard and then we'll go on to the breadboard. So hopefully a little explanation of what I'm changing and then a demonstration that it works. I certainly hope so. Okay, so what have I got first of all on the whiteboard is my original circuit. This is the long tail pair with my two inputs and two outputs. And this circuit worked quite well. But I am going to modify, as it were, the tail from this single resistor to hopefully having a constant current source. So I'll just change that on here and I'll be able to have a quick look and see if I can understand what it is that I've changed. And here we have the change. I've actually put this little bit of a circuit in here. So it's just a transistor that's biased so that the base is on so uh, it, it's constantly conducting. And then this resistor down here is the same 100 ohm resistor that I'd had before. So this controls the current that's going to flow through effectively this tail and that should hopefully make it a lot more stable. I'm certainly hoping so, so that there's less variation in here. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I believe is going to happen because this will regulate that current path from these two transistors then that should give me a much better output on these two outputs here. So I suppose I better have a look and see if that's true. Okay, so here's the last alteration to my circuit. I've now put in a current mirror. Uh, hopefully this will give me a lot more gain. Now, this circuit does have quite a bit of gain in it anyway. Um, or I expect it to have quite a bit of gain because it's quite a nice, simple, basic circuit and seems to work really well. And obviously having the current, 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 current source at the bottom here to help keep this tail part stable, then having a current mirror up the top here adds more stability but also adds a lot more gain. Um, well I certainly hope it will. I do lose one of the outputs so I've only got a single output but that's alright. Two inputs and then an, a single output um, audio circuit type thing I suppose that would re work really well. That's what I'm looking for so better get on and have a look at that and see if it actually works. Okay so starting off from the beginning this is basically my circuit from first time. So if I turn on the power to the circuit and then I turn on the function generator as you can see that's the sigma I was dealing with the, um, the first time I, I did this circuit. Um, before I made amendments to try and stabilize it. As you can see as soon as you turn it on Without any phase shift, we've got um, we've got a signal. Um, it's a little bit glitchy; it's not tracking very well. But if I were to change that phase shift for the two signal inputs, you can see it starts to change, gets a bit steadier because it's uh, triggering properly. But as it goes up, those two are out of phase, so the two signals so we get as much amplification as we can but of course that's not really particularly good because there's always a bit of a signal coming through I'd expect that when both signals are in phase you wouldn't get any signal through so that's why I've amended it to have the constant currents instead of just that one resistor so let's uh, change that and uh, see what we get okay so I've now changed my circuit on my breadboard and I've got the 
constant current circuit in for um, for the tail so it should hopefully work better. So if I turn the circuit on first thing you'll notice is there's no signal there I've got no phase shift between the two signals so I've got no signal what you can see on there at the moment is just some noise but there's no actual difference there's no signal at all to begin with so if I turn the SIG gen on as you can see there's also still nothing there as I've turned it on you go hang on a minute it should be a signal it was the first time I did this but not now that's helped cure that so having that constant current in there now means I've got a stable signal that's not given any ampl amplification when there's two signals in phase coming into this uh, differential amplifier but if I now change that phase immediately there's a signal which is brilliant and they are actually properly 108 degrees out of phase from each other but as I change the phase shift for the two signals they just amplify which is actually what I want. I want the two signals to remain always out of phase but just to be able to amplify them the more out of phase that they are as far as the input signal goes. So I've taken it all the way up to 180 degrees out of phase and not to mention you can also see there's a much greater amplitude in there. It's 200 millivolts per division so that's quite a lot of amplitude increase. Let's have a look at the voltage on that. So we've got from, and this is from 50 millivolts input, so we're getting about, it's pretty much one volt from 50 millivolts to one volt. So that is a lot of gain. And if I continue with the phase shift taking it all the way around and then starts to drop again and as we come back down to uh, 350 360 degrees we end up with no signal again but it's that fact that the signal when it is in phase from the function generator there is no signal at all because it's not amplifying anything because there's no difference between the two signals so that's working much better than the first time I did this circuit and that's exactly what I want and when I turn that phase shift up or round as it were you get a signal but the signal is properly out of phase from each other as on the output which is really just what I want so that's brilliant works exactly how I wanted it to so how about changing this circuit now so instead of having it so I've got two outputs I've only got one output and I have much greater gain because that's what I want from this circuit to get as much gain as possible so to do that I'm going to have to change part of the circuit for the current mirror that I discussed in the top of the circuit so I can get a much greater gain even than this which is giving me one volt from 50 milliamps so I'll get and set that up and we'll come back and see what we get okay so now I've set up my circuit so on my breadboard I've got um, the current mirror in the top of the circuit with the um, constant current on the tail so at the moment you can see that there's some mess on there I've turned the function generator already on the circuit's still on I'll just we do that turn the circuit off you can see that's just a basic signal without the circuit turned on turn it on there's a bunch of noise um, turn the function generator on it stays the same and um, we've got no phase shift at the moment but we've still got the 50 millivolts so let's change that phase shift for these two inputs uh, wow look at that signal that's quite a large signal of course we only get one output now with this circuit but uh, even on look at that even on 30 degrees phase shift I've got a massive 
massive amount of um, gain. So much gain actually compared to what it was before. I'm going to have to change these scales down. Oh, wrong one. That is one volt per division. And as I change this phase shift, as you can see, we get to about there, and that is what have we got. One, two, three, four, over just over four volts per division. Just about four volts for the for the for the whole lot. It's one volt per division. So that is a, a massive amount of gain. So I wonder what if I was to turn that. Let's um, take that back down to there. Just turn the signal off, and I'm going to decrease the um, the amplitude of both of these signals down to something like 10 millivolts. So they are both now on. 10 millivolts. So let's turn this signal on. As you see, there's nothing there, nothing at all, bit of noise. We're on 10 millivolts, so I might be able to get away with changing, well, not 200 millivolts, 500 millivolts maybe, uh, and see what we get. If I now change this phase shift, look at this. 160, 70, 80, 90, 100, and all the way up to 180, 180 degrees out of phase. So even with 10 millivolts, I'm still getting a huge, huge gain in comparison to the gain I was getting previously. Let's measure that quickly. So that's where I left it when I measured it before. That was one one volt but that was from 50 millivolts we are now got 10 millivolts and we're getting nearly basically one and a half volts but considering that our input from these two signals 180 degrees out of phase is from 10 millivolts and we get one 0.5 volts that's a hell of a gain whereas previously without the current mirror I was putting in 50 millivolts on this input signal for the two signals and then only getting one volt out so the gain is just huge with the circuit as it currently is which is brilliant which is what I want lots of gain and it looks quite stable as well it's quite clean really um, yeah brilliant so there you go, a couple of little changes, well I suppose they're not little changes and you could say they're quite significant changes but they don't change the overall operation of the uh, circuit, all they seem to have done is actually to stabilise it, especially with that um, constant current on the tail and give me a lot more gain, a lot more amplification from that uh, current mirror that I added to the circuit and that's brilliant, I mean okay I've lost one of the outputs, I've only got one output but Hey, in an audio circuit, I mean, that could be quite good. You, if you take an input that's a mono input and split it and you want to do some manipulation or you want to get some better gain before you put it through the filter stage or something like that, then, yeah, I think that could work really well. Um, and if you have a look in other circuits, the long tail pair does appear in a lot of other circuits when you start drilling down into like IC circuits and how they're operating for lots of different uh, types of uh, devices then somewhere in there there's probably a long tail pair operating in some format so I imagine it's quite a universally used circuit so yeah I'm uh, going to try and integrate it into something else maybe uh, an amplifier of some sort and, and see what I get so brilliant anyway if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't you know what to do subscribe and all comments are welcome see you next time